Hello everyone, my name is Seth and you're watching my videos on YouTube at How I Think. Thanks for watching my videos. And in today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to use your Cisco uh, Adaptive Security Appliance, the ASA series firewall as the uh, VPN server to have a secure VPN into your network. In my previous video, um, and you can do a search on my on this video. Um, I showed you how to set up a VPN server on uh, Windows 2008 R2. We created an RS server, a routing and remote access server. This would be the next step, which is uh, somewhat secure, because PPTP is not really secure. And so, if you really want a secure connection, then you would want to go ahead and set it up. There's multiple ways of doing this. You can do the whole thing in the command line interface, the CLI. And that's what all the Cisco professionals use. But because I am more of a systems admin guy who happens to work with uh, Cisco devices, I prefer the, uh, the GUI portion. And you can achieve the exact same thing using the GUI portion uh, as you would in the CLI. So I prefer the GUI portion. And so I'm going to be showing you how to do everything through it. And there's examples up out on the web. You can use um, you can you can definitely use the CLI to to go ahead and uh, achieve all this. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so first things first, um, when you're doing this, you're going to be you know whatever appliance that you're using, 5505, 10, 20, whatever. Um, just remember that you know this is going to be acting as your main firewall as well. Um, and so majority of your servers and and everything is going to be either in the DMZ mode and you know either in the DMZ segment which is not shown here or your inside interface uh, obviously never on the outside uh, but because this is a lab environment and I'm not too concerned with security this is just for demonstration purposes I went ahead and said I'm going to be using the outside interface for my uh, main IP address but in production environment, you're, you know, obviously you're never going to use that. You're going to use either the inside interface or wh however, different, you know, whatever the different interface that you have your servers on, that's what you're going to use. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and jump on the our uh, RS server, radio server. And so this is the um, so this is the NPS server, which just stands for Network Policy Server. Um, and here we'll go ahead and. As you can see here, um, NPS allows you to create and enforce organization-wide network access policies for client-held connection request authentication and connection request authorization. And so we're going to be setting up uh, a radius server here. So the first thing you need to do, you're going to click on the plus sign, and under radius client, just click the plus sign. And under radius clients, we're going to go ahead and right-click. Oops, so right click on top of that and hit new. And here um, it's asking for a friendly name, so we'll call this ASA IP address. Now remember the IP address is going to be on the inside interface, but because this is a test environment, I'm going to be using the outside 10.0. So let's pretend this is the uh, inside interface or DMC or whichever interface your inside servers are on, okay? So 10.0. 1.59 so that's the uh, interface uh, IP and and we're gonna give it a shared key we wanna, we're gonna you can call this whatever you want we'll call this Cisco test Cisco test and we'll hit OK so now that we set up our radius server we're gonna click on you're gonna come to policies you're gonna right click I'm sorry you're gonna click on the plus sign next to policies under policies you have connection request policies you're going to right click that and hit new and we're going to call this Cisco test again you can call it whatever you want and we'll call this Cisco test I hit next the next section is asking us for a um, what condition to use uh, we're going to click on add 
and I'll go ahead. If if you if you want, you know, you can have a specific username or a location group or whatever. But uh, in this case, I'll choose the time and restriction policy. And I click on permit or anytime. Hit OK. We we'll hit next. Here we we'll hit next. At the specify authentication methods, we're gonna click on the check mark here. Oops, check mark. We're gonna check mark the Microsoft and uh, encrypted authentication version, Microsoft uh, MCHAP, uh, MSCHAP, MSCHAP version two, and most importantly, unencrypted authentication. We're gonna check mark this. We'll hit next. Uh, hit no to the, make sure you hit no to the pop up. And we'll hit next and finish. Now that we created our policy, make sure you right click it and move it all the way up so it's so it's the first one in the processing order, okay? Next you're gonna right click on network policies and hit new. And we'll call this Cisco test as well. Now here we're gonna specify you know who can come in. So we'll click on add here, I'll double click on the group, click on add group, and in our case, I only want the domain, you know, admins group. In your case, you know, it could be anything, domain users, whatever, what, whatever group that you want, allow access to, but in our case, it's only the, you know, for testing purposes, I'm just gonna allow domain admins, hit okay, hit okay, hit next, we're going to grant access, hit next. Here, I'm going to make sure that I allow unencrypted authentication as well. Check mark that. Hit next, hit no, hit next, leave the defaults, and hit finish. And here as well, I want to make sure that I want to right click this. Come on. I say move up, move up, and move up. So I want in the processing order, I want this to be the first one. All right, so at this point, we set up the radius server the way we want it to. So next, we're going to go ahead and jump on the firewall. So here, um, you're going to click on the remote access VPN. And under network clients, you want to go ahead and click on IPsec. And from here, you're going to click on add. And we're going to call this new group. Um, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it remote access. And the pre-shared pre key here will be uh, Cisco test. I'll leave the identification as none. User authentication, uh, server group. Um, we're going to click on here. I'm going to click on. Um, so it, when you click on manage, it takes you to the AAA server group. From there, you're going to click on add. And we're going to call this NPS network policy. Um, server protocol is the radius server leave everything as is we're going to click on OK and you can see it's highlighted and if you're not make sure to highlight it then we're going to click on add but since this is just testing purposes I'm going to choose the outside interface because that's where it's located so now here it's asking for the IP address of that server so I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it the give it the IP address, and once again, I'm gonna go ahead and just go test. Give it the um, server secret key. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, and I'm gonna hit OK. So now we've specified our group here, uh, authentication group. Next. Um, IP address. So when somebody connects, you want to make sure that they they get an IP address assigned to them. 
Now, if you have a DHCP server, you can specify it here, and it'll automatically assign the IP address for them. In our case, um, you know, I don't have a DHCP server, so I'm going to go ahead and click on. I'm going to click on Select, and I'm going to specify my own IP range. We're going to click on Add, and I'm going to call this IP Pool, and let's just say uh, ten. 10.0.2.200, 10.0.2.254. This is the only range I want to specify. And 255, 255.0.0. Obviously, this is going to be, you know, whatever range you give it. It's just, this is the range I'm giving it. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to assign this pool. Hit OK. So, so far, uh, We've given it a name. We have specified our authentication group where users are going to go and get authenticated. Once they do, what IP address they're going to get? They're going to get the IP address from here. And now, what policy to use? So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on Manage and click on Add. And so, we're going to call this Remote Access. I'm sorry, Remote. Um, group policy you can call it whatever you want I'm gonna click on this little drop down here and uncheck inherit and make sure I check mark IPsec that is the protocol it's going to be using I'm gonna click on servers now at this point if you have a built-in DNS server uh, you can specify that uh, you know whatever whatever DNS servers if you if you don't have any you can specify one here uh, it doesn't really matter uh, more options if you had a uh, DHCP scope or default domain um, once we do that we're gonna click on split tunneling I'm gonna go ahead and um, uncheck this and from the drop down I'm gonna say tunnel network list below and I'm going to uncheck this and inherit network list. Now I'm going to have to specify, you know, which segment uh, the user the users are going to be on that we need to uh, split tunnel. So I'm going to click on add. I'm going to call this local segment. Click OK. I'm going to right click that and create my policy. And I'm going to. I'm going to say everything in this group right here in this segment. And obviously, you know, if you have one of the bigger firewalls, you have multiple segments, uh, and you can specify as many as you want. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK. Yeah, hit OK. So a split tunneling will be used on anyone on this segment, wh whoever comes in through here. I think we're good over here. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to hit OK. Um, we went ahead and set everything up. Uh, I want to make sure that L2TP or IPsec protocol is unchecked. I don't want L2TP, I just want IPsec protocol. So look over everything, make sure everything's all right, and we're going to click on OK. So once you click on OK, as you can see, we have a new IPsec group which is called Remote Access, which we just set up. It's already enabled for IPsec, and it's going to be using the NPS, Authentication Server Group, which we specified earlier and configured uh, to authenticate against. And once it, once it authenticates, then it's going to go ahead and use this group policy to specify everything else, you know, the IP address and the DNS and so on and so forth. And the rights and you know sp split tunneling and all that is specified by this group policy. So now that we've done all that, make sure you hit apply. Um, now to test this, you can you can come down to your local a you know um, your AAA triple A local users group and make sure you click on server group. And if you remember, this is the exact same screen earlier. We were trying to specify our AAA group. This is where we were, or this is where it took us to create it automatically.
So we're going to go ahead and test this out. And to test this, we're going to click on and make sure that the server is listed down below. And we're going to click on test. Um, so now it's going to go out to our radius server. I'm going to say authentication and I want, whoops, I'm the administrator. Remember we said domain admins group. And there you go. Authentication test to host 100154 is successful. So at this point, you're all set. So all you got to do is use your IP. You know, uh, at this point, you're gonna your your user is gonna be using the uh, Cisco VPN client utility that you can download from the web, from Cisco's website. And in there, you'll go ahead and configure it. All right, so to test the VPN, um, because I am on a Mac right now, and Mac doesn't really have a Cisco VPN client, uh, but they do have a built-in Cisco VPN IPsec, which is pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'll go ahead and use that and configure it. But if you're on Windows, go ahead and download the uh, Cisco VPN client. I think they're at 5.7, some version, something like that. And they're going to be pretty much asking you the exact same thing here. Uh, the screens will be different but the concept exactly the same so you'll go ahead and specify your server address and that's going to be the uh, outside IP address the public IP address of your firewall um, you know where the you know, how the world sees it so that's the IP address you're going to go ahead and type in the account name and password is obviously whatever your username is and whatever your password is you'll go ahead and uh, uh, type that in then under authentication settings, uh, mine says authentication settings. Obviously, yours is going to be different. Um, so whatever screen that has that, go ahead, and click on it. Uh, shared key is Cisco test. That's what we. That's the secret key that we went ahead and provided throughout the whole thing. And uh, so go ahead, type that in there. Then for group name was the remote access. If you remember, that's the group. We that's what we called it. You'll hit OK, um, and then you'll hit connect. Because I am on the inside, obviously same IP. It's not going to work, but yours should work because we tested it and we know it's successful and we know it works. And that would be it. That this is how you would go ahead and uh, set up a secure VPN connection using IPsec and your Cisco ASA appliance with a RADIUS server. So uh, I hope you learned something. I know I did. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and please subscribe. Bye now.